economy is doing well and everybody's out here investing and we're all spending and things are going well. How do we get to the bust times? What causes the bust in the cycle? So it's this is the hard part for a lot of people to understand because it's difficult to translate good times into bad times or see what the mechanism is. Consumers, from our point of view, things look pretty good. Everybody's driving a new car. Everybody has new clothes. I'm sure we've taken on some debt to do this, but life is generally quite good. And we all have jobs, so it's easy to service that debt. So everything seems to be going good, except there is a disruption which has taken place. And the disruption is something that Austrian school economists note that gets um, glazed over by the mainstream. The more that you consume, the less money there is for businesses to invest, generally. So we need some way to make sure that your consumption habits and everybody's consumption habits dovetail into the investment plans. But then the Austrian view isn't just on the absolute magnitude of consumption or investment expenditures, it's also when those investment expenditures take place. So the time element of production matters. It's important when investors have, what types of projects they've funneled their, their investments into because that determines when they will pay off. And the payoff is important because the debts come due sooner or later and we need income available to pay off the debts. So now imagine this scenario in the Austrian business cycle. We've taken on a lot of debt. Generally, it hasn't been a big problem because business conditions have been robust, so we have income to pay off the debt. But all the investments that we've made or the majority of investments that we've made are long dated. They're not going to pay off for a decade. And eventually, after you know maybe a year or several years go by, we get into a bit of a crunch. On the one hand, we're still consuming. Everybody's going out and borrowing money from the banks. And if you're borrowing money, you're not saving. And so they don't have income to pay off their debts. And at the same time, businesses don't have income to pay off their debts because the investments that they've made are so long dated that it's still years in the future before they generate a profit. And so we've got this crunch. The debts come due, but there isn't income available in order to pay off those debts. Now, when this happens, there's two things that, that could happen and, and generally do happen. One is, and the most obvious one for people is, for individuals, you'd say, okay, well, I can't pay off my debts, so now I need to consume less and I need to start saving so I can pay off my debts. So you decrease your consumption expenditures. So we see a reversal taking place. And that hits the businesses that provide us with consumer goods. That, that hits the, the, the clothing company that's selling us clothes that we're not buying. That hits the car company that normally had a good economic time because you were buying a new car every other year and now you're deciding to not buy a new car this year. So that's that's one element of the reversal taking place. And this is what this is, what I'm describing is, is the boom turning to bust, right? It's, it's this overconsumption, which has now been reversed in, by a decrease in consumption to free up income so we can pay off the debts that we took on in the past. On the business side, They've got this problem where they have invested for such a long time period, they're filled up with research and development projects, for example, that aren't going to pay off for another five years, but they've got a bill coming due today. Their bank is calling them up and saying, hey, we need you to pay off uh, this, this loan, this money that you borrowed. And they say, yeah, well, we've got your money, but we're not going to have it for another five years. That's how long it's going to take for this, for this project to, to mature. And your bank says, no, I'm sorry, I, I need the money right away. Because from the bank's point of view, by the way, everybody's in the same situation. Every business has done these long dated investment projects. That's the cluster of errors. They've all made these long dated investment projects that aren't gonna pay off until the future. And so businesses are scrambling for cash. And the way that businesses come up with cash so that they can pay off these debts is that they start selling off these investments, these projects that they've started. But of course, if everybody sells an R&D project at the same time, that really collapses the price of those R&D projects. And so businesses start losing money in those avenues, workers start losing their jobs in those types of investment plans. So just so that businesses can come up with some funding in a hurry to pay off the debts that they've already accumulated in the past. So the key problem that I'm really describing to you is along the structure of production, because all the investments took place too far into the, or they took place um, in projects that weren't going to pay off until a long time into the future. Businesses eventually find themselves in a bind where they need to pay off their debts. They don't have income to do it, so they need to start shedding and selling off these old investments. And that's typically what we see 
at the eve of the boom and going into the bust, you see businesses start shedding projects, start selling their investments. Those prices start collapsing. People start losing their jobs in those industries because they're not profitable anymore. And then combined with that on the consumption side, we see a consumer goods slow down. People stop buying new cars or new houses or new furniture, or they eat less expensive food so that they can free up income um, to pay off their debts. But of course, when they start consuming fewer of those goods, it hits those industries too, the, the clothing company, the car company, the, the, the food manufacturer, maybe for higher end foods that people aren't eating anymore, um, those businesses start suffering. So that's the start of the bust um, coming in. Hello, I'm Anthony Coleman. Thank you for watching this clip. If you enjoyed this clip from my show, you can click in the upper right hand corner to see the full episode, or you can click in the upper left hand corner to see other clips. Thank you and welcome to the Economic Circus.